Mangroves protect us from the sea, but are we doing enough to protect them? Mangroves are the first line of natural defense against coastal threats such as the rising sea level menacing Guyana's low-lying coast. 90% of Guyana's population resides on the low coastal plain, with their livelihoods closely intertwined with the benefits these mangroves provide. Plastic dumped near the coastline is suffocating the roots of mangroves, even within conservation reserves. 24-year-old student researcher and environmental activist Sufayne Dash Allen says mangrove protection measures must account for plastic pollution if they will be successful. Plastics are not supposed to be in the mangrove forest, so oftentimes the, the, it's not from the earth, the earth does not know how to break it down. So even when it breaks down into smaller particles, it has significant impacts. And we know that mangroves help to protect us from the sea. They actually um, help to take in a lot of carbon dioxide. There's so many ecological services that we will lose. And when it comes to the microplastics, little insects and invertebrates which is in the mangrove forest can eat it and ingest it, taking it for food, and it can bioaccumulate toxins of the food chain. In a recent research paper, Dash Allen inferred that while the use of single-use plastics has increased dramatically over recent years, their impact on existing conservation efforts have not been properly accounted for. Biologist Diopal Samwaru, an environmental officer at Environmental Management Consultants Guyana, explained that while the large aerial roots of mangroves are effective in breaking forceful tides hitting the coastline and encouraging sediment deposits, they also trap large volumes of waste that end up in the water, which later suffocates the roots and prevents mangrove seedlings from germinating. He highlighted that a significant amount of plastic pollution results from the dumping of waste in multiple waterways that eventually makes its way to the coastline to be deposited among the mangroves. Being an environmental advocate as well, Samwaru often partakes in cleanup exercises to remove trash suffocating the mangroves and states that often more than 100 bags may be collected in the space of just a few months. He warns that these efforts to save the mangroves are not enough without proper waste disposal management to prevent the trash from ending up right back where it was removed from. He suggests that plastic collected be repurposed. Dash Allen suggests revamps of restoration efforts with a focus on plastic waste management and mitigation. When it comes to the accumulating plastic, it was a lot of single-use plastic, and those in turn became microplastic. So my main recommendation was for them to be for there to be a ban. Secondly, there also needs to be some form of soil waste analysis done for us to understand the main um, contributors or, or the main pathways as which these plastics are entering the environment, and for us to control it from the source, we need to have an understanding. We need to also um, we um, reduce the culture of littering and improper soil waste disposal in Guyana. Guyana Sea Defense relies heavily on the mangroves, supported by the concrete seawall that runs 280 miles along the coastline. By 2050, shorelines are expected to retreat by almost 50 meters in some parts of Guyana. Work is ongoing to restore mangroves in about 12 areas across Guyana and continuous efforts are being made to revamp existing restoration efforts. Plastic pollution is just one of many threats to Guyana's mangroves. It remains clear by all accounts that the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of Guyanese will be impacted if big changes are not made.